Hey, Bio30s. Today we're going to be discussing the cell cycle, which is essentially the life cycle of a cell. This is how um, a single cell, a cell that gives rise to another cell, uh, a parent cell, is going to eventually give rise to uh, either two or four daughter cells, depending on whether the cell division in question is going to be a mitotic or a meiotic cell division. Um, so beside me here, I've got the, the cell cycle drawn out. Uh, you've got it here in the notes as well. And I'll just quickly run through the cell cycle, starting with uh, the point at which the cell has just divided. So the point of where the cell has just finished dividing is right here. This is the cell has divided here. That's going to be at the end of the part called cytokinesis, which is at the end of the M cycle. So the very beginning of this large section of the circle, which is called interphase, uh, that is where the cell has just finished division and is now beginning to quote unquote grow up. So depending on the cell, interphase is going to be broken into either four or three portions. Uh, the first portion that some cells do after cell division is called G0, which is right here. G0 is basically a time where a cell is kind of recuperating after the cell division. As you can well imagine, taking one cell and making it into two requires a lot of energy on, on the part of the cell. So sometimes some cells will go into like a state of, I guess, arrested development, or if you want to call it that, but they slow down to basically recuperate their energy before they can begin the process of cell growth. Now, some cells don't do that. Some cells skip directly over G0, but all cells after cell division will enter eventually into uh, G1. And G1 is the majority of the life of the cell. Now, this isn't exactly drawn to scale, but you can see that the G1 phase here is at least almost half of the, the pie chart that I've drawn. Um, G1 is essentially where the cell uh, grows up and, and gets old, uh, or grows up and gets too big for its britches, as we discussed in the last uh, uh, video that I, I discussed with you, the whole problem with as a cell gets bigger, the volume of the cytoplasm grows faster than the, the uh, surface area around it, uh, the, 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 uh, the accompanying um, a cellular membrane I can't basically provide for the needs of the growing uh, cytoplasm. So that's when the cell decides, okay, I've got to now divide. So at the end of G1, in preparation for that cell division, the cell will now enter into what's called S phase. And the S phase is, we discussed this last day as well, or in the last video as well, we discussed that uh, genetic material has got to duplicate before cell division. So it's at this point where you've got your chromatin, your DNA is considered to be chromatin in G0 and G1, it's at the S phase where you begin to start to see uh, some condensing of the genetic material. You get the formation of chromosomes, and then you get basically the formation of the duplicated chromosomes that I discussed last uh, video with you, which is in fact your sister chromatids. So your sister chromatids will begin to form here in S phase. And in a human, for example, we would have, uh, initially we would have 46 strands of chromatin in a G1 cell, in, you know, if it's a body cell somewhere in the, in the human body, there'd be 46 strands of chromatin. They would then condense into 46 chromosomes, which would then duplicate into a total of 92 sister chromatids that would basically form uh, in preparation for cell division, and that occurs in S phase. At that stage, we enter the final stage of interphase, which is uh, G2 which is basically where the cell again prepares itself for cell division, uh, gathers up its resources, gather up its, its, its energy that it requires in, uh, in preparation for the actual cell division. At that stage, we actually enter cell division. And, and cell division can be one of two types, as I've been mentioning in the last you know, couple of videos now. It can either be a mitotic cell division, which would be uh, one diploid cell in a body uh, producing another diploid cell. So let's say a stomach cell produces then, uh, a parent stomach cell produces two daughter stomach cells, which are identical to the original parent. Uh, or it could be a meiotic division 
in which a, um, a progenitor cell produces a, uh, a, a diploid progenitor cell, produces a, um, a haploid sex cell, either a sperm or an egg cell. Uh, and that would be a meiotic division. Now, regardless of which form of division we're dealing with, that process of division is classified as the other major section of the cell's lifespan. We've got the interphase section here. The cell division section of the life cycle is referred to as M phase, and M standing for either my meiosis or mitosis, depending on which type of division you're doing. They both start with M. Now, this phase, as you'll be learning here in the next couple of days, is broken into um, uh, s s several stages. Um, and an easy way to remember the stages, and, and I'll be discussing this more as we get into the, the, uh, the video on mitosis and meiosis, is you're going to remember an acronym, PMAT, P-M-A-T, which stands for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, which are the four stages of either mitosis or meiosis, and we'll be discussing them in more detail in the next couple of videos that I'm going to be sending your way. The actual process of the actual division of the cell, where the cells actually divide and separate from one another, that actual physical separational moment has a special name, and it's called cytokinesis. So the process by which one cell slowly becomes two distinct entities is wrapped up in the pro, meta, ana, and telophase, the actual separation of those two cells at the end of the division, that is called cytokinesis. And once that occurs, basically the, the process starts all over again. Now the two daughter cells either enter into a stage of G0 or directly into G1, depending on what type of cell they are, and the life cycle basically starts all over again for both of the daughter cells. And, um, and one last thing here for some humor, uh, just how do cells divide? Uh, if you can't see the, uh, the quotes below me, there they are. But take a look at the notes. Uh, there's a couple of little cartoons there for to show you how cells actually do divide. And in our next video, we're going to discuss the more common of the two cell divisions in our body, which is the process of mitosis. And that'll be our next video. So we'll see you uh, again for our next lesson on cell division. Thanks a lot, guys.